Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Survival where in the last episode we finished our mining operation project over here and I am really happy with the finished result. Now I haven't been able to read all of your comments on that episode because put simply, I am from the past. I guess I'm technically from the past in all of my videos, but this time around I'm even more so from the past. Basically, I'm having to do a little bit of pre-recording because I'm going away on a trip, so I'm making this video directly after finishing last week's video, so hopefully that gives you a good sense of where I am time-wise and date-wise, because uh, there was a little bit of an update to Minecraft that unfortunately I have missed. 1.19 The Wild Update Mangrove Swamp Biomes as far as the eye can see A whole new range of glorious building blocks A bunch of mobs added too like the adorable frog And not forgetting the terrifying deep dark ancient cities where we can find the warden None of that is going to be in today's video. <laughs> As I said, this is a pre-recorded episode, so I'm still stuck in boring old 1.18. Ugh, what a, what a horrible update that was. For legal purposes, I am joking. 1.18 was by far my favourite update to Minecraft. But I am still very excited for 1.19, but it is going to have to wait until next episode. So, hold on to your hats until next week, where we're then going to do a whole bunch of stuff with the new update, and it's going to be a real good time. Today, however, we're just going to do some more things around our world here. Starting off by breaking this overly sized bamboo stalk. I forgot to put some string over this one last episode. <laughs> so let's break that down, give it a little bit of growth so we can get some uh, leaves on the top. And then we're going to pillar our way uh, up to the top of the bamboo. My plan has, has a fault here. We're going to pillar up, jump on here and place a string. There we go. Problem solved. Let's move on to the next job. Which is going to be pretty much the main thing we do in today's episode, and that is build a secret base behind this waterfall. <laughs> if you guys can remember, back in episode 12, I want to say, where we made our water mill just up here, I purposefully left that gap behind the waterfall open to, at one point, build something behind, and honestly... I kind of forgot it was there until recently, so yeah, let's make a secret base behind the waterfall. Now at the moment we really don't have much going on here, and if we were to dig this way maybe 20 blocks or so, we would actually bump into the crop farm that we have underneath this building. So we're going to have to build a bit of a tunnel leading to the base itself and kind of Werve or squirt 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 what's the word uh weave <laughs> not squirve weave our way around the crop farm oh you think after making videos for five years you would eventually learn to speak but nope i still forget how to talk okay so i'm gonna get dig in this tunnel and make sure i don't bump into that crop farm and just go to an area underground that actually has the space big enough for me to dig it out you know what I would see love to be added to Minecraft? Haste potions. There are so many times when I'm digging a hole in Minecraft where I kind of want to have haste by setting up a beacon, but it's just not worth it. Well, this was one of those times where I would have loved to just swug, swug, <laughs> swigged. <laughs> I'm having trouble with words today, apparently. Well, I would have loved to just taken a haste potion and dig all of this out uh, really quickly, but no, I've had to do it the old fashioned way, but it's fine. We got our tunnel dug out. Now I think I'm just going to decorate it a little bit before coming to this spot and building a special doorway. The tunnel is done and it's not super obvious from the outside. I did prefer how the waterfall looked when we had those two stone blocks there, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that, I don't think, unless, and here is the tunnel design by the way, pretty trippy, <laughs> unless we possibly change these deep slate blocks out for some stone stairs, that way it might seem a little bit more flush. Moment of truth, let's turn around. It's glitching for some reason. That's strange, it wasn't doing that before. And it also doesn't look that great anyway. <laughs> um, I might leave it like this for now and I'll see if it grows on me. But if not, we'll just switch it out for the deep slate and put the trap doors back down. 
Anyway, as I was saying, here is our tunnel design. A little bit painful on the eyes to walk through, but I kind of like that if I'm being honest. <laughs> it's just some polished deep slate with sea lanterns behind acacia trap doors. And crafting all of these acacia trap doors, oh my goodness, I had to chop down so many acacia trees. And it just makes me think how much I would love a wood cutter a little bit like a stone cutter right but for wood because i can't believe we're still only getting two trap doors for six planks it just it makes no sense really especially when this crafting recipe exists six planks for three doors a door is just two trap doors <laughs> we should be getting six trap doors per six logs please mojang let that be a thing I can already tell I'm getting quite distracted today with new ideas to add to Minecraft, so I'm going to get back to it and build myself a piston door. So now it's time for the moment of truth. Does the piston door work? My own design that I made through blood, sweat and tears, and there will most certainly not be a tutorial linked in the description below to the original person who made this build. Uh, no way, that's not the case. This is definitely my design. Yes, uh, don't go in the description. There's nothing there, I promise. <laughs> Does it work? Let's flick the lever. All of those blocks should go back in the center. Yes, they do. Let's face plant the wall and reverse it and there we go opens up there very nicely so the only thing it didn't really show in the tutorial that I was I mean uh, the only thing I couldn't figure out how to do whilst making this was put the lever somewhere I could actually reach so I think I would quite like it in the tunnel so maybe if I try and get it on this block right here that would be good I'm pretty sure all I'll need to do is break that lever, put some redstone here, get rid of this sea lantern because it's not classed as a full block, and replace it with something that is copper in this case. And then if we put a redstone torch here, and, oh no, <laughs> and then a block on top. That makes it all shut up, that's very nice, the only trouble is I'm now stuck on this side. It's okay because thankfully pickaxes exist so we can cover that back up and then I think all we have to do is place our lever and pray to the gods that this opens up. We do get a bit of a trap door in the face but that's fine because it opens nicely and it closes all the same. The only thing I've got to do now is just complete the ring with some blocks of my choosing as opposed to stone brick which in this case is oxidized copper we'll just give it one more test there we go very nice and when we open it back up we should have copper all the way around the outside ah look at that redstone's so easy i don't know what everyone complains about so I've made a little extension to our tunnel here and from this point forth is gonna be our base so I need to dig myself a pretty big room, and I think this one is gonna require a beacon. I can't lie, I really enjoy digging holes in this game. <laughs> it genuinely may be one of my favourite things to do. I probably wouldn't be saying that if I did it all the time, but every now and again I really enjoy just the monotony of it and sitting back, not really paying too much attention and just letting your pickaxe go wild. It's really, really satisfying. And when it's a science like this, which only takes about 20 minutes, it doesn't even feel like a chore. It's just nice. So we've got the room dug out to build our base inside of it and I think the first thing we should do is just kind of get all of the walls and the floor and the ceiling situated and then we can work on adding everything else in afterwards. Now I know it's not much to look at currently and that's mainly because it's entirely unfurnished. I've literally just done the walls, the floor and the ceiling as I said I was going to do. But hopefully this should give you a good idea as to what it could potentially look like when we're all done. So originally I was going to have a bunch of different tunnels leading off to a bunch of different rooms. Kind of like uh, a bit of a fallout shelter if you will but like a really advanced one kind of like the game fallout shelter if any of you know what that is um but instead i decided to scrap that idea because i think it was going to be overly complicated for a build that i'm probably never gonna visit <laughs> at least not that often um because this is 
purely aesthetic everything we're doing today um so i thought i'd just go with a big open room where we can kind of have everything all bundled together in one now i'm planning to let this copper oxidize over the course of this episode i wanted to get to this second level right here and i don't know if we're going to be able to let that happen in time because it takes a while but yeah i don't plan to keep it as this color i want it to be that one and currently that's the only block, so we're not making very good progress. But that's fine, that can happen over time, it's no rush really. Uh, something I did just want to mention is, all of these blocks in the ceiling, those are observers. And I never thought I'd ever say this in my entire time of playing Minecraft, but... I'm out of redstone. <laughs> I, I have none left at all. I, I used all of it crafting these observers. Um, so a mining trip may be in store eventually. But that will not be happening just yet. Instead, what I'm going to do is furnish this room. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do all of the furnishings and show you around afterwards or just a couple. I'm not sure. I'm going to see where my time takes me because right now it is quite late at night and I need to go to bed, <laughs> get some sleep. See, I'm punching out the torches, ready to shut my eyes. But in the morning, I'm going to get up and do some building and I'm just going to see how much I can get done. Okay, it's looking pretty good in here. We'd still have some other things left to add in, like getting rid of the torches for one, <laughs> but I've just kind of added in the main pieces of furnishings. So I guess we can start off at the front here with our main desk with our big old TV. We're going to hook up some surveillance cameras outside so we can actually see outside of our secret uh, bunker of sorts that we've made here. And I don't know what this is on the side. <laughs> I honestly have no idea, truth be told. I was going to make some sort of like speakers, but I couldn't really do anything that I liked. So I just placed down some pistons. Use your imagination. If you guys have any ideas of what these could be, please let me know because I am very, very curious. But we have a nice little control. No, I pushed my minecart. That's okay. It's really easy to place back down. We just stick a rail, our cart, and break the rail there we go my seat is back in position <laughs> so we got the control panel at the front here and of course my chair to sit inside of over here we have some storage placed on the trapdoor shelves very very nice even got a ladder to move across and reach the higher shelves up there and then we have a pretty cool bed design now this may not look like it is actually going to work as a functional bed because uh you'd be thinking you got slabs next to it that's not going to work as a spawn point but thankfully uh even at plops me out there we have this flat block with the upside down barrel so if I do use this it will actually you know set my spawn point which is very nice and then these two things over here are well let me show you what this one does shoots out some items <laughs> I'll probably put some rockets in there or something maybe a item that can be somewhat useful to me so it's not just uh, completely pointless but yeah just shoots them all out at once kind of cool and then over here I'm thinking we put a map down that's why I've got all of these item frames so maybe if I need to do some sort of strategic planning uh, for something down here in my bunker I have a map overview to look at so I suppose we should probably go and put a map inside of these item frames now I don't know whether I want to actually make a map of my base I've already got two of those in this world I don't think I need a third one so I'm just gonna go find an interesting piece of terrain and map it out. Now I do need to make sure I'm not going to go too far away from my base which is just up there and that's because when I do get my hands on 1.19 I want to generate some new chunks so we can get the mangrove swamp and the deep dark and the ancient cities and all that sort of stuff so I'm gonna try flying a direction I know I've flown in before which is this way. I I've flown this way quite far so I should be okay to keep going for a little while. I kind of like the look of this area. We don't really have much going on as far as biome diversity is concerned, but I really like the look of this river and how it could potentially look on a map. So, albeit the trees and, and all of the terrain around is going to look pretty similar, I would imagine, 
But uh, if we just pop the first map around about here, roughly in what I'm presuming is the center, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna look pretty funky, I gotta say. Okay, let me make eight more maps and I'll go place them down afterwards. I actually take back what I said about this map potentially looking a little bit bland with the lack of biomes. There's a lot of colours going on here. It's very, very pretty, isn't it? And I love the river kind of in an X shape here. And can you guys tell that this map is upside down? <laughs> because it is. And I can actually tell that, but I think that's only because I was the person who made the maps, obviously. Um, but if I go like this way up, it looks like more normal to me. But I think it looks better this way, just because we have this tiny bit of cold biome sneaking in, backed away kind of in the corner, and uh, yeah, I, I would rather have it this way around. But let me know if that looks weird, or if it's just looking weird to me. So as I said, we're not done in here, there's a couple of things left to add in. For starters, we've got to get rid of the temporary torches we have on the floor. I'm thinking I'm just going to put some sea lanterns down here, that'll probably be fine. And a few of the walls are looking a little bit bland, so I'm probably going to go get some paintings, and maybe a couple of other bits and bobs. It really is amazing what difference a painting can make. <laughs> so we've added a few of those in just to break up the emptiness in the walls. We've also got a couple of whatever this is, I don't know exactly, something mechanical maybe, <laughs> over on both of the sides, and I've also added these uh, tiny little dangling lights from the ceiling, and also, as I said I was going to do, place some little sea lanterns in the floor, so this place is nice and bright. So now, all we have left to do to complete this room is set up our security cameras outside the front of the bunker. Okay, the security cameras have been set up. I'm here positioned in my chair, ready to just make sure they're all in working order. So we can turn on the telly by pressing this button right here. And there we go, there's the first camera set up. We can actually change channel just by flicking the levers here. We have, I think, four in total. So that's the second one, the third one, just from this viewpoint. And then we have the fourth one over here. And uh, just to prove to you, that this is actually a live feed. Let me just run outside and actually show you this. So I'm going uh, through the tunnel right now. I'm about to fly out the waterfall any second. Bear with me now. And then I can just land over here and plonk. And I'll give the camera a bit of a wave. Hello, can you see me over here? Yep, so that's actually a live feed of everything going on outside of the bunker. Pretty cool. So that's everybody is going to actually have to do it for today's episode. I haven't edited this video together yet, but I think it might be a little bit shorter than my usual ones. I, I don't know, truth be told, but if that is the case, I do apologize. Um, but yeah, I'm out of time. I need to start getting ready for my trip. So uh, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this build. It was a little bit of a different one. I enjoyed making it. I can now go ahead and put the top of my chair back on. <laughs> you couldn't really see me in the clip if I had that up there. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of the build. Any additions we could make to it are always welcome down in the comments below. And I will see you in the next episode once I'm back from my trip. I'm going to Switzerland, by the way. And uh, yeah, we'll be in 1.19 and uh, we'll be able to play around with the wild update stuff. It should be very, very fun. So I hope you're looking forward to it and I will see you in that video. Bye for now.